And the way your son don't need a gun to get respect up on the street Under the sun, the best the sun will pop the clock so Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Passion And I'm going to be your amateur entertainer for today Let's get this rolling Have a great rest of your video experience And enjoy So I decided to hop on MW3 because this I don't know, it, you know Black Ops 2 started making me a little bit angry I started hitting like back-to-back -back quads just out of random. I don't know why. Like four or five games in a row, I hit back-to-back -back quads, and it really made me mad. I don't know. It's probably just my luck. But what I'd like to share with you guys is my experience to Philmont. It's a uh, it's a scout ranch in New Mexico, Cimarron, New Mexico, to be exact. Time length of our trip was around 14, 15 days. We had taken an Amtrak train to a stop like probably about five miles out from where the exact camp is camp itself is like 300 square miles of just surface i guess and itself of just like hiking we arrived we stood in this really shitty motel for a day we actually had a lot of fun with um with that day itself we were just walking around this like grungy old town that looked like it was still in the 90s and it was it was just really fun we they had like this town itself was like really like the roads were bad the, you can tell that there was just a lot of mexicans there don't get me wrong i don't have a problem with mexicans but they were all driving their nice ass cars living in shitty ass homes you know how it is in the south at least so so when we were stumbling around we were looking for this water like park place kind of it was just mostly like pools and stuff like that we were looking around and like all of these grungy old ghettos of towns, or not towns, just like buildings themselves where people would live. We saw this really modern looking building and we went inside it and it was actually the pool. It was kind of crazy, I was thinking, because like they have this shitty town and this nice ass pool. But we went to bed, woke up, and right as that, we packed up all our stuff took showers and shit like that and we headed off onto this bus with a whole bunch of other scouts and we just uh, we toured along we were looking at the senior the scenery it was all good and everything like the scenery was great greatest thing i've ever seen in my entire life because I, all i see here in wisconsin is just like hills or flatlands farming nothing really cool i mean like the, there's mountains here there's strange ass animals but once we arrived we set our packs down and we got into lineup checkup got our insurance and shit like that we um we got our medicals and we went off to our base because there's like a lot of kids here there's probably around a thousand or so so oh shit he turned on me let's watch this oh my god i got shit on but after we got set for base camp we just relaxed we run around there had an opening campfire which was pretty cool i mean it just told the history and stuff like that of the camp who had founded it why he did it stuff like that you know so after that we went back ate dinner and went to bed woke up we had did like a checklist of what we have and hell no i didn't have any of that shit because we already had a scout that had went to this event like three four times so he already knew like what was going down itself in it so it was all cool and everything um after we got all done we ate lunch and breakfast and stuff like that we had taken a bus out to this turnaround it's called cimarron turnaround and it, what was cool about it is we oh okay no one's there oh yep there he is but what was cool about this place was the bus would come, drop us off, turn around, and we're stuck out in the desert. But usually it would be like a deserty area, kind of. But there's that this was like the wettest year itself for it. So there's a lot of trees and stuff like that. Like it was cool. I hiked along with our trainer for about two days or so. That was I think 20 miles itself. Um, saw some cool stuff, and the guy was really cool. Like, our second, uh, stay there, we had stood on this mountain, but there was a prairie on top of the mountain, so it was all flat land. There was a whole bunch of trees, and it was just really, really exciting. I, I actually loved that. So, after, when we got to the third day, we packed up camp, and we started trekking along our 
trainer or our tourist guide to see how we're doing and stuff like that. He had left. He went back to camp so he can get the next uh, set of scouts to go out. So, I mean, those trainers, they get paid a good amount of money and they get to stay at this paradise, but they have to walk and hike a lot. But, I mean, it's not that bad. They just have, he has the scouts just take the shit along and he just cruises along with them. We, um, all the stuff that we had seen are jackrabbits. We'd seen, like, deer walk through our camps and stuff like that. Um, everything was just really exciting. I'm, I love the trip so much. It wasn't all just hiking because we went, it was like around 90 miles or so. It wasn't all just hiking. We reloaded rifle rounds and we shot them. That was really cool. We went rock climbing for like five minutes because it started raining. So we had to just come back to camp and stuff like that. Of us cooking our meals, we, uh, we had the staff cook our meals, which was really cool because we arrive at a staff camp. Um, probably the hardest point of the trek was getting our own water it wasn't really too hard but once we got our water which we had to use a filtration system it was a pump through a filter into another hose an exit hose into our camelbacks or whatever after we had done that we had to carry about like 10 20 pounds worth of water itself and then we had to carry all the food and our gear and our tent on our backs so that rounded around at 70 pounds when we'd climb up the mountains our two adult leaders they take too long so we took all the shit off their their backs and stuff like that and that rounded us out to like 80 pounds and i can tell you one thing my shoes after that trek were destroyed but after after our last day on the trek instead of going back to the turnaround so a bus can pick us up we just walked back into camp we got all all our stuff sorted out. We took a shower because we only showered once during the trek, and that was at a staff camp. So, I mean, it's not all that bad. We just stunk like fucking skunks or whatever you can say. The After we got done showering and just unpacking our gear and cleaning it and stuff like that, we had went to the gift shop. I had bought a $100 belt or so, which was actually really cool. I think it's going to last for a long time. Um, we got some food. We just headed back. We were started to play euchre. We started. Uh, I started playing euchre because every single day at around eleven to one o'clock, it would always start to rain. No matter what, it would just rain like a mother. It, we would all sit in our tents and we'd play euchre. It was all good. I mean, I I had so much fun. <laughs> you got shit on. The that was probably. Not the weirdest thing, but we had a really cool experience when we were hiking down this trail. They, um, there was a farmer that lived like right next door, and his cows got out of his pen. So we were hiking with cows for about 10 miles or so, which was really cool. Um, weirdest thing I experienced, the toilets there, they weren't the best, so they'd smell. But you got used to it after a while. But you know how you have, I'll, t I'll put a picture up in the video, but how th the toilets work, when you go into a public restroom, you have the two toilets right next to each other, but there's a divider in the middle. Well, those toilets, they did not have a divider in the middle, so I was shitting right next to the people that I was trekking with. That was, it was, it was weird, but it gave it a more, like, vivid description of a trek or whatever. I don't know, I... I didn't really mind it. it. It was just whatever. I mean, I had to shit, so I shit, you know. When we got on the train, we'd stop ever so, like, 100 miles. And because of the stops, there'd be more people that'd come onto the train, right? And you can see on the people's faces that hopped onto this train, just their, their nose would scrunch up because we smelled so fucking bad. Like, we, we didn't even smell like body odor we smelled like just like dirt and the land had touched our souls and it was just like very very different like it was it's a different smell you'll never be able to like forget it it's almost like a human carcass like you can't really describe it and you can't really forget it but once you smell it you know what was going down 
and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm kind of having another trek from June 19th to the or June. S I'm kind of having another trek on June 16th to the 25th. It's um, it's just like it, but we're gonna be on a boat in the middle of the ocean for uh, roughly nine days. We're taking a plane out to Florida, and we are going to be scuba diving. That's pretty our main goal. Yes, I had my scuba diving license. If you are wondering, it was kind of expensive, like $600 for two people to get registered. We got our scuba diving license, and we hopped in a pool, done our training and stuff like that. And then we went out to a local lake, and we had pretty much dived it. It was sweet. This truck, we are going to be diving three times a day for roughly nine days. And it's going to be very tiring. It's going to be really cool. And we're just... We're just going to have fun. I mean, just think of all the cool shit that we're going to see underwater. And scuba diving is just very different. Like, if you've never scuba dived, I would highly recommend it. It is so fun. You get to see so much new shit. And just the feeling of being underwater and being able to breathe, it's just awesome. Like, all the wildlife that you get to see while you're underwater and how they interact with you is just so much different than what you'd see when you're above water. Because, I mean, when you're above water and you, like, try to touch fish, they'll be like, oh, shit. But, I mean, you can literally grab a fish, hold it, and pet it while you're underwater, which might sound weird, but I guess it's just it. Well, thank you for tuning in if you've made it this far. I really love the appreciation that you guys are giving me with one view a video. I love that. Even though I'm uploading regularly and I'm not getting enough support, I don't really care. I'm not making money off of it. It's just enjoyment. Well, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm going to peace out of here. I love you.